Oh, okay. Hello, everyone. I am. Um, my work is about jailbreak detection in the modern iOS applications. Um, let's start um, from who, who, I'm, who I am. Uh, my name is Vadim Yvorov. I am a security researcher and reverse engineer. Uh, I worked as a full stack engineer more than two years ago. Uh, now I am a reverse engineer, uh, formerly in Asgard. You can see my GitHub. And let's start with introduction. Uh, modern iOS applications, all of them, uh, don't have uh, validation of jailbreak. Like a lot of applications doesn't uh, check the jailbreak. Uh, more than 90% of applications. Um, but jailbreak detection is an important part of uh, such such applications as games or something with um, <clears throat> sensitive data. Um, iOS is a closed operating system and um, <clears throat> jailbreaks bypass iOS security to get almost full access and jailbreak detection used by banking applications and games and a lot of other applications to make sure that the environment is safe or to block cheats or cracks. And security researchers need uh, these two to access or reverse protected, protected applications. <clears throat> and how is debugging? In iOS applications, one uh, without a jailbreak, it's uh, performed by ptrace using LDB or Frida debuggers, uh, and to allow ptrace, we need uh, get task allow entitlement, and by injecting Frida code uh, or something else. By injecting any code, we need an uh, app to be repackaged. In both cases, you need to resign the application, uh, but it has a lot of side effects. Different different team ID and files are modified. Uh, and if if there is integrity in the in the application, uh, it will be corrupted. Uh, with the jailbreak, no, no entitlements are required, and Frida is able to attach to any process. Uh, but how to avoid it? Jailbreak, jailbreak detection evasion. Uh, jailbreak detection evasion mechanisms are added to reverse engineering defense to make running the app on a jailbroken device more difficult. Um, <clears throat> like most other types of defense, jailbreak detection is not very effective by itself, but scattering checks throughout the app source code uh, can improve the effectiveness of the overall anti tampering machine. <clears throat> and the enterprise security risks posed by jailbreak and compound in the face of tools that can help users easily abate common jailbreak detection methods. A uh, user can download any app tweak like uh, Spotify++ or some banking tweak directly from the Cydia App Store. And a lot of applications provide jailbreak detection, uh, as do many media and financial service apps that want to limit content pirating and account compromise respectively. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, these jailbreak detections rely on uh, combinations of uh, 
relatively straightforward and evadable tests, such as checking for files or directories common to jailbroken devices, such as Cydia um, or Checkrain, checking for elevated di directory permissions, uh, like more directories with write permissions, um, root file system, and so on. Uh, and checking to see if an app can successfully write files of its sandbox, uh, trying to elevate the sandbox, and checking CDI protocol handler. Um, <clears throat> the fundamental limitations of these comparable detection tests is that as client-side tests, they can be accessed reverse engineered and evaded by attackers. In addition, uh, the apps performance performing these jailbreak detection tests must go through app pools, app review process, limiting the scope of data they can collect to analyze devices jailbreak status. Let's take a quick look at them. <clears throat> File-based checks. Check for files and directories typically associated with jailbreak, such as uh, Frida Server, Electra, Cilio, and etc. File based checks. <clears throat> Most often, the, these are checks using the file existed path function. Uh, in NS File Manager or File Manager default file exists. However, there are also applications that use low level C functions like fopen, stat, or access. Uh, it's not so hard to cook. And checking file permissions. Another way to check for a jailbreaking mechanism is to try to write to a location that's outside of the application sandbox. You can do this by having the applications attempt to create a file in, for example, the private directory. If the file is created successfully, the device has been jailbroken. This, methods, uh, this method consists of checking the permissions of specific files and directories on the system. More directories have right access, on a jailbroken device uh, than, than on a non-compromised one. One example of this is a root partition, which originally had, has only read permission. Uh, if it's found uh, it has a read and write permissions, it means the device is jailbroken. These, uh, there are different ways of performing these checks, such as using NS file manager uh, and C functions like Statfs open u times stat fconf stat64 and f open. Um, <clears throat> as you can see, there is a Swift code check um, for write access. Um, if you can write, device is jailbroken. If you can't, device is not jailbroken. The same code in Objective C. The same, absolutely the same behavior. And the next one check is checking file, uh, checking protocol handlers uh, like Cydia. You can check protocol handlers by attempting to open a Cydia URL. Uh, the Cydia App Store, which practically every JP jailbreaking tool installs by default, installs the uh, CDA protocol handler, CDA URL shim. Uh, and you can see the code to check if CDA is installed. Very simple code, few lines. And why it's not enough? Why it's not enough? These simple checks can be accessed reverse engineered and evaded by attackers anyway. 
So uh, what better ways of jailbreak detection do we have? Better ways of jailbreak detection to try to block detect debuggers. We can use speed trace, uh, deny touch, uh, try to kill its own bit EID with the zero signal and check if it raises flagged. You can see the code. Uh, the next one is uh, check if the parent bit is launch diamond. If get bit, if get parent bit is one, uh, try to detect if the root FS is writable. Again, uh, try to load an invalid signature. We can use a central function and check signature state of our application. Uh, check signature of our application directly. Um, we can use, uh, we can check the integrity of the signature of our binary. This check starts by opening the main app binary from the disk, seek till um, <clears throat> code magic entitlement sequence, uh, read the entitlement and calculate uh, the checksum like CRC or something. <clears throat> this is the manual way to check the binary integrity. Uh, and better ways of jailbreak detection, API-based detection. We can use fork, process fork in sandbox diamond doesn't deny uh, applications the ability to use fork, e-open, or any other C function to create child processes on jailbroken devices. However, sandbox diamond implicitly denies process forking on non-jailbroken devices. Therefore, by checking the returned bits on fork and applications can tell if the device is compromised. If the fork is successful, uh, successful the app can deduce that it's running on a jailbroken device. Um, system, system function uh, with a null argument on a non-jailbroken device will return zero. Doing the same on a jailbroken device will return one. This is because uh, the function will check whether BNC hash exists uh, and it only exists on a jailbroken device. Uh, <clears throat> an open CCH service detection, CCH loopback connections uh, due to the very large portion of jailbroken devices that have open SSH installed. Some applications attempt to make connection to local hosts on port 22. Uh, if the connection succeeds, it means uh, open SSH is installed and running which proves the device is jailbroken. And uh, we, can, we can access 22 on OpenSSH or 44 port if, if you use chat brain. So <clears throat> we can check if some libraries are, are, are loaded in your process, uh, like Frida, Secret, uh, this detection method starts with calling functions like uh, dynamic library image count and uh, dealt uh, get image name to see what dynamic libraries are currently loaded. This method is very difficult to dynamically patch due to the fact that the patches themselves are part of dynamic libraries. Uh, Substitute uh, inserter delete, for example. Uh, we can use the open memory scanning uh, internal structures. <clears throat> and check if your process is instrumented. Check if you if your process is instrumented by Frida. Um, we can do it by by the code that you can see on the screen. 
uh, and uh, again we should check code integrity uh, using crc derive constant from the code uh, check api entries etc this code is based on security kit from the github the link will be in the presentation you can do, download it after the end uh, and summary in general more uh, the more complicated uh, the jailbreak detection is the more difficult it is to detect and bypass uh, the most common mistake when implementing jailbreak detection often lies uh, in the implementation itself we often uh, come across apps uh, that have great jailbreak detection but uh, the implementation is in one function that returns true or false depending on uh, whether the, the device is jailbroken in these cases we bypass jailbreak detection by using a secret or frida uh, or a similar tool to invert the return value from the detection function in practice the best jailbreak detection combining multiple technologies techniques and integrating them into other functions so that they cannot be easily bypassed thanks for uh, watching and that's all you can see my github and email thank you maybe no questions Okay, uh, thank you, Vadim. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, unfortunately, the question did not uh, wasn't wasn't recorded. But yeah, uh, there are, the question was uh, if there are any examples of uh, like malicious process trying to evade jailbreak detection, and some real world examples. Uh, there's a lot of tweaks uh, for. Uh, for different applications like uh, for Spotify, uh, there's a tweaks to uh, bypass premium. Uh, there's a tweaks for Pokemon Go game and other games to uh, cheat. This is uh, all the examples of bypassing jailbreak detection. Once again, thank you, Vadim, for the nice presentation.